This hint, this whiff of the existence of atoms was carried much further by a contemporary named Democritus. Of all the ancient scientists, it is he who speaks most clearly to us across the centuries. The few surviving fragments of his scientific writings reveal a mind of the highest logical and intuitive powers. He believed that a large number of other worlds wander through space, that worlds are born and die, that some are rich in living creatures and others are dry and barren. He was the first to understand that the Milky Way is an aggregate of the light of innumerable faint stars beyond campfires in the sky, beyond the milk of Hera, beyond the backbone of night, the mind of Democritus soared. He saw deep connections between the heavens and the earth. Man, he said, is a microcosm, a little cosmos. Democritus came from the Ionian town of Abdera on the northern Aegean shore. In those days, Abdera was the butt of jokes. If around the year 400 BC, in the equivalent of a little outdoor restaurant like this, you told a story about someone from Abdera, you were guaranteed a laugh. It was, in a way, the Brooklyn of its time. For Democritus, all of life was to be enjoyed and understood. In fact, for him, understanding and enjoyment were pretty much the same thing. He said, a life without festivity is a long road without an inn. Democritus may have come from Abdera, but he was no dummy. Democritus understood that the complex forms, changes, and motions of the material world all derive from the interaction of very simple moving parts. He called these parts atoms. All material objects are collections of atoms intricately assembled, even we. When I cut this apple, the knife must be passing through empty spaces between the atoms, Democritus argued. If there were no such empty spaces, no void, then the knife would encounter some impenetrable atom and the apple wouldn't be cut. Let's compare the cross-sections of the two pieces. Are the exposed areas exactly equal? No, said Democritus. The curvature of the apple forces this slice to be slightly shorter than the rest of the apple. If they were equally tall, then we'd have a um, cylinder and not an apple. No matter how sharp the knife, these two pieces have unequal cross-sections. But why? Because on the scale of the very small, matter exhibits some irreducible roughness. And this fine scale of roughness, Democritus of Abdera identified with the world of the atoms. His arguments are not those we use today, but they're elegant and subtle and derived from everyday experience. And his conclusions were fundamentally right. <laughs> 